Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 126. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 126 to 130. Hey, uh, this Exceller asked a great question. He has Kung Fu tables. Here's white belt, yellow belt, green belt, black belt. And there's certain moves. So hand moves, foot moves, head moves. Now for the yellow belt, there's only four. For the green belt, there are six. But for the white and black belt, there are eight moves. Here's what he wants to accomplish. He has a template. And he simply wants to um, populate this cell with the belt and have the hand moves, foot moves, and head moves, all of them uh, retrieved from those tables. And remember, one of the problems is not all of the um, belts have the same number of moves. So let's see how to do this. We first need to, in our table sheet, and then we'll jump over to our template sheet. And by the way, there's lots of notes for this with reference videos for all the, the concepts if you want to study more. Uh, the first thing we need to do is in our tables, we need to name these tables. So I'm going to highlight the white table very carefully. And I'm going to come up to the name box right here. Click and type white. Enter. Don't forget enter. And let's do the same thing for yellow, including all the blanks, because we want to be able to fill those in if there are all of a sudden more moves. I'm going to click up in the yellow the name box and type yellow. Ooh. Yellow. I'm a bad typer and speller. Enter. And then I'm going to do the same for the green. Type up here and type green. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the black. Click up in the name box, black. Now notice we have, we've named our tables, but we're going to need to use data validation. We need to have the names of the belt white, yellow, green, black. Now notice I made a spelling error earlier. You better make sure that you don't make a spelling error. In fact, you can click here and look black, green, white. Notice those are um, not, they don't have a capital first letters, but these do. That won't be a problem. Because guess what? We're going to use this, because Excel doesn't recognize the difference between the word W, capital H-I-T-E, or uh, little w, H-I-T-E. We want to name this right here because we're going to use it in our data validation right here for a drop down. Now watch this. Instead of uh, going up to the name box, if you have the name of the range, because this is the range we want, if you have the name right above the range, simply use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. And there it is. It says create names from selection. Where is your name? In the top row. Remember, I always have notes. If I use those keyboard shortcuts, there's some notes over there. Click OK. We also need our moves here. Actually, we don't need our moves here. Let's go over to our template. And let's use data validation. Now, in 2007, you go to the data ribbon. And right there, and there's data validation. In 2003, you go to the data menu, and then data validation. The keyboard shortcut, I'm going to click Escape. The keyboard shortcut that works in both versions is Alt-D-L. D for data, L for validation in the old Excel. Alt-D-L. Now, what do we want to allow in this cell? Hey, we want to allow not any value, but a list. Hey, where are the list of values? Hey, we have already named that. So you can use the keyboard. You could type equals in the name, or you could hit the F3 key. That's paste names, F3. Three, and we want our belts list. And then click OK. Now we have our drop down. Our drop down. That's fancy there. That's uh, conditional formatting, which we're not going to cover in this video. Now we need to uh, build some formulas. Remember our goal, and we want to talk about a, a few things here. Our goal is this is going to be the yellow table that we look values up if we select that. If it's black, we want the black table. Uh, so if we were to uh, create a formula in this cell, we need that as the table, but we also need hand moves. Let's go back over here and look. Uh, hand moves, foot moves, head moves. Those are in the first column of our yellow lookup table. The moves, and by the way, I just put these moves. These would be actually descriptions of the moves. But there, if we were using hand moves and we told the VLOOKUP function to look in the second column, notice this is the second column 
of the VLOOKUP table. It would return that. If we told it to look in the third, it would return that. Fourth and fifth, it would return that. So we have our each one of our tables named. Each one of them has the same names in the first column, which the VLOOKUP function looks uh, uses to look up the row to then retrieve the value. Let's go back over here. And we're actually going to highlight all of the cells here. I'm going to highlight uh, this row right to there. And then I'm going to hold Control and click in this cell and drag all the way back, very carefully highlighting only those cells. And then I'm going to hold Control and click all the way there and drag and drag. So we've highlighted all of the cells, even though they're not next to each other, all of the cells that are going to get formulas. Notice this is the active cell right here. That means we can start to create our formula there. Equals VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP. And what is the lookup value? This one right here, for this row, we want heads. As we copy our formula up, it will use foot. As we copy it up here, it will use hand. Now wait a second. If we're going to use head moves for all of this row right here, we need to lock it. So we need to know our cell references. We'll use our F4 key. We'll hit the F4 key once, twice, and three times to put the dollar sign in front of the column. So it's locked when it goes across the columns. But when it goes across the rows, it's not locked. Comma, what's the table array? Oh, cool, we have our word yellow up here. Oops, if we do that. Excel thinks that a word typed into a cell is a text string. And in fact, you can prove it to yourself. If you double click that cell reference and hit the F9 key, that's evaluate. F9 is the evaluate key. You could see it's in quotes. That's telling Excel that is text, a text string. I'm going to Control Z. Luckily, there's a function in Excel that will convert a text string to a range of cells, in our case, a named range, a reference to some cells. Watch this. We're going to click in front of that B1 and type indirect. The indirect function does exactly that. Close parentheses. Now, we got to be careful here. That B1, which is our table for all of these cells, when we're looking up yellow, needs to be locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key once. Now, if you don't believe it, you can use your same trick right here. Highlight that and hit F9. Oh, look at that. It gives us in um, array syntax, that little curly and co uh, separated by commas. That is exactly the table we're supposed to be looking up. That semicolon actually means go to the next row. Control-Z, that is pretty cool. So there's our table array. And as we change this, that indirect function will look at different tables comma. Now, what's the column? Remember, we need um, for head moves, if we're looking up the first one, we need column two. If we're looking up the second one, we have column three. Now, notice I've set this up exactly like we did over in tables. A column, B column, C column. Why do we do that? Because we're going to use the column function to return the column index. If we want two, we're in column two, which is B, so we can just use the um, column function, C-O-L, the column function. And we can use an argumentless function here. It just will return whichever column it's in. Notice, as we copy this over here, when it gets to column D, it'll return the number 4, which is exactly what we want when we get to that column there. When it goes up, it'll still be in column 4, so it'll work perfectly. Now we have to type a comma. And then we need to use false because we're looking up words, which means we need to find an exact match in the first column of our table. So we put 0 and then close parentheses. That's the formula that will work in all the cells. To populate all the cells, hold Control and tap Enter. Now let's scroll over and take a look here because it looks like we have some zeros. Now we need to fix that. And the way we can do that is we can we could do it with formulas, or we could do it with formatting. Hey, let's do it with formatting with our cells still highlighted. Use the keyboard shortcut for Format Cells dialog box, Control-1. And there it is. The trick is going to be we're going to go down to Custom. And in the t area right here, I'm going to type 0 semicolon. And by the way, if you want to learn about custom number formatting, 
go over here to the notes. There's a reference to a great video that teaches you about this. That semicolon means, hey, we're going to show positive numbers. And then negative 0, semicolon, that means how we're going to show negative numbers. And then because we want 0 to display as blank, we're going to put double quote, double quote. That means blank. And then semicolon, and we'll use the at symbol, which it means please show text. And then we'll click OK. And that should solve our little problem there. And we can test our little template. Go to the gre green belt, and they're all green. And it's only showing six. Go to the black belt, and it's showing all eight for the template. All right, we'll see you next trick.